stand together for a word. Father, we give you praise and thanksgiving, and we do give you glory and honor today. Yes. Bless us in our time together now. Let the words of our mouth, meditations of our heart, yes. be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. We sense your presence, yes. and we say thank you for showing up today. <laughs> thank you for showing up early this morning. Yes. Thank you for being with us right now. In Jesus' name, we're going to give a thunderous amen. 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 Way down, give somebody a great big God bless you. God bless you. I said a big one. God bless you. God bless you. Go ahead and take your seat. Take your seat. I'm happy this morning. Amen. I'm happy this morning. Hallelujah. And I'm not just happy this morning. I'm happy every morning. Amen. I'm happy every morning. Yeah. But I'm, but I'm, but I'm more overwhelmed today. Uh, by something the Lord did early this morning. Yeah. I, I, uh, I had some papers that were lost. I had some important papers that was lost. And uh, Sister Sandra was supposed to get them yesterday after board meeting. And I went to the office and looked all over the desk where I thought I had left them. And I said to her before I rushed off for the funeral, I came back and I said, Sandra, I apologize. I don't have those papers. I thought they were on my desk. I've looked everywhere with what little time I have. I said, evidently I took them home, but I'll get them back to you sometime before the day is gone. After the funeral, I went home looking for papers. I looked for papers, I looked for papers. I uh, went over to Sister Harrison's nose house, made out the uh, memorial service order, and uh, came back by this church last night, and I looked for papers, and I looked for papers, and, and uh, I mean important papers that, that I, I just didn't want. And so I went home and I just said, Holy Spirit, you, you gotta you gotta show me where those papers are. You gotta show me. And I, I got up this morning about five o'clock looking for papers and looking for papers there in the house. And then I just said, Well, I'm gonna get away from it because I gotta meditate on this word. And uh, came into the church, got into the church about seven oh five, looking for papers, looking for papers, went through the drawers again, went through everything where I thought I would have put papers, and uh, all of a sudden I just sat down. And uh, there was an envelope, a gold envelope that I've been that I went through yesterday, and I went through last night, and I, <laughs> and I went through, and, and there they were. And I said, "Thank you, Holy Spirit." Same, same gold envelope. But I said, "Whatever, whatever I needed to do this for, I, I, I just bless you. Thank God for it." Listen, we gotta learn to trust the Holy Spirit for everything. Everything. Y'all hear me? I mean, for something that simple, you got to learn to trust the Holy Spirit. And listen, trusting Him is just as easy as breathing. It's just as easy as inhaling and exhaling. And, and we got to learn to trust the Holy Spirit for everything. God bless y'all. I love y'all this morning. And you can, tell I'm, you can tell I'm fired up. <laughs> it's all right. Go ahead. For years growing up as a child, for years, growing up as a child, I heard Christians talk about the blood. Yes. For yes. years, yes. all down through my time of growing up, even to this age here, I heard people talking about the blood. How the blood of Jesus saves us from our sins. Heard it for years. Yes. Still hearing it. How the blood of Jesus saves us from our sins. I, I've heard that song saying over and over and over again, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And then he says, what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I've been hearing about the blood for years. And I'm coming to understand now that the blood is so vitally important yes. and ought to be important to every born again believer. Amen. But the blood is vital to sinners whether they know it or not. Yes. Because yes. nothing is going to wash away our sins but the blood. Blood is vital to this world. Yes, it is. I'm talking yes. about the blood of Jesus. Yes. It's vital to this world, yes. to our nation, to our church, to our ministries. I've heard for years how we can plead the blood over sickness yes. and have health. Yes. I've heard that for years. 
I've heard for years and I've seen it done how preachers cast out and exercise demons by pronouncing the blood of Jesus. I've seen demons come out of folk Yes. Because the blood was pleaded over those spirits. Yes. Yes. Blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. I've seen people screaming and hollering, and it wasn't them. Yes. It was the spirit and the power of Satan that didn't want to let people go. Amen. But as the blood is pleaded over that individual, yes. I have seen people set free by the power of the blood. Yes. Yes. I've seen it. I've seen it. Yes. The blood is so vitally yes. important yeah. to yes. us. Yes. I've heard us sing. There is power. Yes. Yes. Power. <laughs> Wonder working power. Yes. Where is it? In the blood. In the blood. Of the who? Yes. Lamb. Lamb. And then we go through it again. There is power. Yes. Power. Yes. Wonder working power. In the precious blood of the Lamb. Yes. I've seen parents, and I'm sure many of you have done the same thing. When you send your little ones off to school, or you see your children go off to their jobs, we pray God's protection by placing them under the blood. How many of y'all know this morning there's power? Yes. In the blood of the Lamb. Yes. Somebody just ought to shout now and say, Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. Yes. Yes. You know it's got to be important. Yes. Because the word blood, as best I could recollect and as best I could gather, and I looked at several sites and I looked at a couple of commentaries, and as best I could gather, the word blood appears 346 times in the Old Testament. That's in the King James translation. 346 times in the Old Testament. And listen to this. 101 times in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Which gives us a total of what? 447 times. Yes. Yes. There is a scarlet thread running from Genesis to Revelation. Blood in the Old Testament. Blood in the New Testament. 447 times. Biblically, in King James Version, you'll find the word blood. Well, I thought with that then, if, if, it's, if it's that important that the scripture mentions it that many times, then there's got to be an importance for us to know something about the blood. Yeah. Other than just every first Sunday we come down and grab this little crack and grab this grape juice, which Jesus says, this is my blood. Yeah. <laughs> In the New Testament that is given for you and as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this blood, this cup. You show my death until I come. You become my witnesses. So I, I thought with that many times, the blood being mentioned, I thought with, with, with the scarlet thread running throughout the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, that it's got to be important. Yeah. How about you? You think it's important? Yes. Yes. All right, then this morning what I want to do is I want to discuss some of the benefits of the blood of Jesus. I want to list some of the benefits and listen, I also as we go along, I want to list some of the entitlements that the blood of Jesus provides. There are benefits to the blood of Jesus, but there are some entitlements that we're going to be discussing over the next few months on the first Sunday as it talks about the blood of Jesus. Even as we come into this Advent season. If there was no shedding of blood, there would be no remission for sin. Yes. Somebody ought to thank God for Jesus today. Yes. Yes. Somebody just ought to tell him, thank, you. thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. <laughs> you just ought to tell him, thank you for Jesus. Thank you. We are barking upon the Advent season, but he's already come. Yes. Somebody ought to thank him for the blood today. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to Romans chapter 5. 
verses number 6 through 11, Romans chapter 5, 6 through 11. Romans 5, starting at verse 6 and going down to verse number 11. And once you're there, just give us an amen so we'll be ready to move forward with you. Amen. And if you're still turning, just say, wait on me. If you don't have anything to read with us with, then just say, go ahead without me. Used to be a time, bless you, used to be a time we'd say, if you don't have your Bible, but now we have to change that now and say, if you don't have anything to read with me, because some of you have iPads and notepads and, and uh, iPhones and whatever else you have. You go past those two, that's all I know. <laughs> All right, Romans chapter 5, verse number 6. Are you there? Yes. Let's read that together, starting at verse number 6. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Now, he didn't commit it to sin. He died for who? The ungodly. Who are the ungodly? We are. Amen. Let's read 7. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet for adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. Verse 8, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified, how? By his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him. Now, verse number 9, I want you to make this note beside verse number 9. We are saved by his blood. That's one of the benefits. We're saved by his blood. Yes. You have that entitlement as a believer. You're saved by his blood. Salvation does not come through any man or any woman. Salvation comes through the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. God uses men and women as instruments to lead people to Christ and to give them scriptures and to pray with them the prayer of salvation and to walk with them through their fellowship with him. But you are saved by his blood. That's in verse number nine. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Let's read verse number 10 and 11. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Somebody shout atonement. Break that word down. It means at one minute with God. How we made at one with God through the blood of Jesus Christ. So come on and say this with me. We're saved by his blood. We're saved by his blood. Say it again. We're saved, We're saved by, his blood. by his blood. Now, let me say this to you. Our at one minute, our atonement is based completely on the work of one man. Please get this. Our at one minute is based completely on the work of one man. Underscore that one man. Because it is also based completely on the one man at one time. He won't have to do it again. He's already done it. Somebody say, thank you for the blood. Now, I got another one. It was in one event. So you got one man at one time in one event. And that event took place over 2,000 years ago on a place called Calvary. And the man that did it is named Jesus the Christ. So you have one man at one time with what? In one event. 
And he made all of this that's happening right now, 2,000 years later, possible that people are still being made at one with God. Tell me there's not power in the blood. <laughs> Aren't people still being saved? Yes, Tell me there's not power in the blood. Over 2,000 years later, people are still being drawn and saved and delivered and set free because of the blood of Jesus. Look at somebody and say, the blood is so important. The blood is so important. Listen to this. Listen to this. One man, at one time, in one event, paid the price totally. For every one of us, yes, sir. if you're saved, just lift one of your hands. Look at that. Every one of us. Hallelujah. Because of one man yeah. at one time in one event paid the total price for all of us Thank you, Lord. to be saved. Man. Now, salvation is free. Yeah. But it cost Jesus something. Yeah. And when you get saved, it's going to cost you something. Yeah. Because he's calling us to a life of holiness and righteousness. Yeah. And that's a price to be paid. Yeah. And I don't about it. Salvation is free. But listen, you got to learn how to walk in holiness and righteousness. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hallelujah. One man yeah. at one time yes, sir. in one event. Yes, Pay the price totally. And, and when we truly know this, here's how communion becomes a worship experience. Yes. Because I'm still talking about worshiping God through communion. Yes. When we really come to know this and understand this, that one man at one time in one event paid the total price for all of us to be saved. Yes. When we truly understand that, communion will become a worship and not just something we do. Amen? Because when I come to this table, I come to this table understanding that it was one man at one time in one event that paid the total price so that I could come this table and then when I come I want to worship the Father for Jesus but then you know something else I want to do at this table I want to celebrate him for my salvation yeah. somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. somebody shout celebrate celebrate <laughs> glory to God now some people wonder how could one single event alter world's history you got a lot of skeptics that run around. See, we challenge a lot of things when it comes to spiritual and biblical stuff. We challenge a whole lot of things. Well, if you believe that, Pastor, then how is it that one man could alter world history? Yes. How is it that one man at one time in one event yes. could change the whole course of this world? Mm -hmm. Well, let me submit to you that on August 6, 1945, mm. August 6, don't forget it, 1945, one man by the name of Harry Truman, you've heard of Truman, haven't you? Yeah. August 6, 1945, Truman ordered the atom bomb to be dropped over Hiroshima. Mm. That's what he ordered. How many men did it take? One. 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 What was his name? Harry, Harry Truman. Truman. He set the order out that a bomb be dropped, that a bomb be dropped over, over Hiroshima. And I studied it and looked at it and the death and the devastation and the destruction that followed were unparalleled in history. August 6, 1945, one man, one time, one event. But I Googled it and looked at it and noticed how it altered world's history. Yeah. Nobody complains about that. Wow. <laughs> An unparalleled event took place and none of us demonstrated. None of us questioned. None of us protested. None of us marched and wow. it changed world history.
history forever. Notice this. The atom bomb changed the entire course of geopolitical events as every building as it was recorded was leveled, every building within 4.7 miles of the epicenter was leveled almost instantly. Every building, no matter how tall it stood, it was leveled quickly and instantly. And then 93,000 people died immediately as 300,000 died eventually from the fallout. Yeah. And when I read that, I shook my head and noticed that that event by the hand of one man never happened again at one time, altered world's history. Mm. So when I got over here to Romans chapter five, and I began to look at what the apostle Paul is saying, the Apostle Paul in this scripture is not talking about the atom bomb. He's not talking about what was dropped on Hiroshima. He's not talking about how the atom bomb changed the world's history. Paul says, I've got one better than that. Look at somebody say, I've got a story better than that. Some of you believers may not have that story, but you all, if you do have it, you all will tell somebody, I've got one better than that. How many of y'all know God through his Holy Spirit has dropped this spirit in this earth and has changed many of our lives forever? The way you can test to the fact that I'll never be the same again. I'll go back to doing what I did again. I'll never be bound what I was bound by again. I'll never be without Christ again. I'll never be without a fellowship with him again. I'll never return to what he delivered me from again. It changed my life. Somebody testify to that. Just, just wave your hand if you can testify. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. Paul says, Paul says in Romans 5, I'm not talking about the Adam bone. That was what I pulled up. That's what I Googled and looked at. So that I could parallel what Paul was talking about. He says, I'm not talking about the atom bone. A-T-O-M. Paul says, I'm talking about the A-D-A-M bone. Bomb. Yeah, the God. atom bomb. Yeah. One man yeah. at one time in one event. Yes. Yeah. 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 Bummed out. <laughs> yeah. 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 Adam bomb He says, that's the bomb I'm talking about that failed when Adam bombed out in the garden of Eden at the beginning of history. For when Adam bombed out, the fallout and the aftershocks affected all of humanity even to this day. Wow. I haven't even got to the second Adam yet, and I won't get to it this morning because this is an ongoing series, but let me just pause right here and thank God for the second Adam. Yes, yes. Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Adam bombed out. Yes. <laughs> and from his bombing out, the whole world and all of humanity became yes. affected. Yes. For by one man's Sin, yes, right. death yes. reigns over all of us. Yes. But by one man's life. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. See, see, I'm giving you this because I want you to understand the worship of communion yes. and how important the blood really is. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Here's another benefit. Here's another entitlement. Turn to Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 7. Right. Ephesians 1, 7. Here's another entitlement. One, you're saved by his blood. Two, 
another entitlement that you have. Ephesians 1, 7. If you have it, say amen. amen. Let's read it together. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Is that what your Bible says? Yes. In whom we have. Look at somebody and say, if you're a believer, look at somebody, if you are a believer, and say, I have it. I have it. Yeah. Yeah. What do you have? I've got redemption. How did I get it? Through his blood. How powerful is that? Amen. How powerful is the blood of Jesus? And aren't you glad the blood has not lost its power? Yes. Do you not know you're not the only one redeemed? Yes. He's redeemed many. And he did it through his blood. He's redeemed folk that you didn't even want to be redeemed. <laughs> You know, some folk don't want some folk to be saved. Come on, yeah. And we don't want them to grow, and we don't want them to get powerful, and we don't want them to deal with the Holy Spirit, and we don't want the gifts of God in operation in their lives, because a lot of times we want to be the only ones. Let me just get my little hand and burst your, and burst your bubble. You're not the only one, but he's redeemed. He's redeemed in it through his blood. He's redeemed folk just like you. He's redeemed folk yeah. worse than you. Yeah. He's redeemed some folk that were a little bit better than you. But all of us need to be redeemed. Yeah. 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 So then, according to Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, and we have what? The forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. grace. So then, so then, here's, here's, here's the benefit. We are redeemed by the blood. Yes. Amen. And we have the forgiveness of sin. Yes. I just said to you, a lot of people don't want folk to be saved, but there are a lot of people don't want people to be forgiven. Mm -hmm. I want you to pay for your wrong. Say it. Baby, my wrong is already paid for yeah. when I ask Jesus Christ for forgiveness. Yeah. You see yeah. folk like that, have yeah. they, 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 they want you to pay for what you did. You did it, you're going to pay for it. And they'll grind you the rest of yes, their life if they yes, talk to the yes. yes. If you know you're forgiven, shout, shout, shout in the atmosphere and just say, I've been forgiven. I've been forgiven. How were you forgiven? By the blood. By the blood. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. I'm glad that when he really forgives, yeah. he casts as far as the right. east is from the west. And every time you bring it back up to him, he says, I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way we got to learn to respond to some folk. we got to tell people when they bring it back up. Know what you're talking about. And then some of them will say, don't play dumb. Tell them I'm not. I'm playing smart. It's under the blood. Some people will try to hold you hostage. Hallelujah. With your past. Tell them it's under the blood. And that disturbed some people. You remember when Jonah was called to go down to Nineveh to preach the gospel? <laughs> And, and Jonah decided he was going to get on the ship and go to Joppa. He wasn't going to go to Nineveh. He was going to stick, go the other way. And uh, he got swallowed up by a great fish, stayed in the belly of the fish three days, three nights, cried out to God, and God had the fish to spew him out on dry land. Yeah. Jonah got in a hurry and started running. Went down to take God's message, but when the Ninevites repented, Jonah got mad. You don't know you sit beside some folk who's mad when God forgives of something that you And some of us ought to be glad they're not God. But we would have been wiped out a long time ago. Somebody shout, thank God for the blood. Matter of fact, say, I'm redeemed by the blood. In other words, he bought me back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Doing communion because he bought me back. Thank God 
for the blood. Somebody, somebody shout that with me. Thank God. This. Notice this. Notice Ephesians 1 7. Notice this. Because here we come to another high point. Come to a pinnacle. Come to a pivotal point. Come to another peak in this mountain range of spiritual truth. When you look at the glorious doctrine of redemption. The word tells us in St. John. 834, jot it down. St. John chapter 8, verse number 34. Just go ahead and jot it down. That he who commits sin is a slave to sin. Help us God. That's what John 834 says. We become what? Slaves to sin. Therefore, Jesus came on the scene to do something. He came to purchase us. He came to buy us. He came to do what? Deliver us. And he delivered people in here today. You just ought to thank God for your deliverance right now. If you've been, I said if you've been delivered from anything by the blood, you ought to thank God for your deliverance today. Listen, shout it out in the atmosphere. He came to deliver me. He came to deliver me. And not only has he delivered me, but he delivered my children. He delivered my spouse. He delivered my grandbaby. He delivered my next door neighbor. He delivered somebody on the road that you are sitting on right now. He delivered us. That's why the prayer was prayed in Matthew, deliver us from evil, evil for yours is the kingdom the and the glory. Anybody that delivered, say thank God for my deliverance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody that's being delivered, say thank God I'm coming through. I'm coming through. Somebody just say thank God I'm coming through. You gotta breathe the blood over your mind. You got to breathe the blood over your thought process. Sometimes you got to lay your hands on your head and just bleed the blood over your mind. Thank God for it. Hallelujah. Here's what he came to do. He came to deliver us. He came to redeem us from the slave market yes. of sin. Yes. My God. Go to Romans 5, 9. Romans 5, 9. Yes. I ain't going to ever let you get out of here with right. the excuse that you don't get the word. Amen. You can use it, but it'll be an excuse. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can go anywhere God may lead you, anywhere you want to go and tell folk. But one thing you can't tell them is that we didn't get the word. Amen. 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 Romans 5 and 9. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's read that ninth verse. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art Oh, okay. All right. You read then what you got. I got the wrong thing, did it? Huh? Oh, I'm in Revelation 5. <laughs> did, I, did I say Romans? Yeah. Oh, well, hold on. Go to Revelation. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> must be something else I was supposed to get out of Romans 5 now. Get, go to Revelation 5. Now. <laughs> Let me do what a smart preacher would do. I just wanted to see if y'all was paying attention. <laughs> Revelation 5 and 9. Let's read it. 
And then we'll do verse 10 as well. Throw verse 10 in there as well. Let's read it. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou was slain. Who is he talking about? Jesus. Jesus. And has what? Redeemed us to God. He bought us back. <laughs> and redeemed us to God. How? By thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Verse 10. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign on this earth. Now, who is the only group of people who can say out of every country and tongue and nation? Who are the only people that can say that? You have redeemed us. That's right. It's the church. The only people that can say it. It's the believer. It's the church of Jesus Christ. He says, out of every kindred and of every tongue and of every nation and of every people, we have been redeemed by the blood. Somebody shout, thank God for redemption. Thank God for redemption. Now, he's talking to the church, which means the church then, when you read this chapter, when I read it, and I read the whole entire chapter, as I know many of you have, no big deal. I know you have done the same thing. But when I read it, I couldn't read that verse without going back and reading the whole chapter. And then that fifth chapter led me into the sixth chapter. And I came to discover from the fifth chapter that the church is already in heaven. Amen. Before the tribulation takes place. We're going through some things now, but we haven't gone through the period that is called, according to the scripture, the tribulation. Yeah. Thing I want you to understand is that the church is going to be stopping because the church has been redeemed out of every kindred and every tongue and every nation and every people. And because we have been redeemed by the blood, by the time you finish with chapter number five, before the tribulation begins in chapter number six, listen, the church is going to be raptured up out of here. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Tell somebody we're redeemed. Amen. You better fasten your seatbelt because before we finish with this message, he could come. Yeah. And I wonder if you've really been redeemed. And if you've been redeemed, you know what? We'll be caught up. That's right. That's why it says two will be down at the meal bride. That's what it says. One's going to be taken. The one born and purchased by the blood shall be in All right. So you, you have what? What two things have I already given you? You're what? By the blood? Saved by the blood? And you are? Be by the blood. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do another one. And then we'll close. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. Go to Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Acts 20, 28. You're saved by the blood. You're redeemed by the blood. And Acts 20 and 28 says something else that's very profound. He says in Acts 20, 28, Christ purchased us and bought us with his blood. You're not your own. You're not your own. I'm not my own. I can't do it my way. I can't do it the way folk want me to do it. I'm purchased by his blood. Yes. So how many of you know we've all got to do it God's way? Yes. I thank God for good ideas. I thank God for prophecies. I thank God for revelation. But listen, we're purchased with his blood. Yes. I can't live the life I want to live. That's right. Amen. Because I'm purchased with his blood. Yes. I can't go some places I want to go. I'm purchased with his blood. I can't do some things I'm, I'm purchased with his blood. Yes. Tell somebody I've been bought. I've been bought. Yes. Why do I do what I do? I've been bought. Yeah. Yeah. I'm under the mastership of God yes. through the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm under his mastership. 
I'm under new management. Yeah. 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 I figured some of y'all could relate to that battle. Yeah. I'm under new management. Yeah. <laughs> Let's read Romans 8. Let's read Romans 20, 28. I mean that. Why do I? It's I'm, it's all right. all right. it's all right. I'm going back to Romans after I finish with you and I'll see what's in there. Let's do Acts 20, 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all of the flock over thee which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers to do what? Feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. What is the responsibility of those who have been purchased and bought by the blood? What is it when God makes us overseer over the flock? We ought to do what? Feed, feed the flock of God. Yeah. And we're not to feed them knickknacks. Well, we're right. to give them a truly nutritious, yes, spiritually nutritious, <laughs> full course yeah. meal. Yeah. Not a happy meal, no. <laughs> but a hunger meal. Yeah. So that they will hunger and thirst more for righteousness. Yeah. Not something that's going to tickle our fancies. Not something that's going to satisfy our itching ears. Not something that's just going to make me shout but have no life when I finish shouting. Wow. Not something that's just going to get me emotionally stirred up so that when I leave here, I can go and say, we had a great time this morning. What happened? Girl, we shouted for hours. We shouted for hours. We shouted so much, Pastor didn't even get to preach this morning. He didn't even get to feed us. When those times happen, you ought to have enough feeding that yeah, it ought to take you to Don't make every Sunday, uh, don't make every Sunday uh, a Sunday of, 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 of he didn't get to feed us. Mm. Say it. Yeah. Listen to this. Listen to this. The thing we got to keep in the forefront of our minds is that Christ purchased and bought us with his Blood. Now, the only way the flock will grow and the only way that the church will expand as if we is if we as sheep are being what? Fed constantly and faithfully. Yes. That's the only way we're going to grow. And I'm not talking about just growing numerically. I'm talking about growing spiritually. I'm talking about knowing the way you were last Sunday. You're in a different place. Amen. Amen. Because Wednesday night, Fed me. Yeah. And I'm going to be on no pastors need to be fed. Yeah. And preachers need to be fed. Yeah. See, folk come from the congregation. Oh, pastor, come on, feed me. I can't wait for you to feed me. Feed me, Seymour. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be out there sometimes we need you to turn around and feed us. Yeah. And you don't have to do it from a pulpit all of the time. Just standing and talking to you flat-footed. Even if you're not a called minister of God, you ought to have some word in you so you can feed the men and women of God. Oh, yeah. Say that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And as much as you get fed, you got to learn how to feed others. Yeah. That's right. Amen. And you don't have to feed it or give it like anybody else gives it. Right. Just right. give it the way God gives it to you. Right. right. I ought to be enough word in you the way you can feed somebody else. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. And you don't have to be a preacher to do it. Preachers ought not be the only ones that's feeding. That's right. If you have been purchased and bought with his blood, he says Amen. here in Acts 20, 28, he says that we ought to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Now let me say this to you and I'm close. When sheep are fed properly, they're going to reproduce very naturally. Yes. You know what I'm noticing in this trend of church? In this millennium age? You know what I'm noticing? You know what I'm noticing in this, in this trend of church as we move along all across this country? You know what I'm noticing? Sheep are being fed, but when we are fed properly, we're going to 
reproduce naturally. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But here's what I'm noticing that's taking place. The great need today is for people to be fed. That's the great need today. It's for people to be fed. Because if we get fed what the word says, and we intend to do something with it, it's going to bring about spiritual growth. Yeah, yeah. And spiritual growth will bring about numerical growth. And numerical growth will bring about financial growth. Yes. That's a principle. Yes. That's what's going to happen. That's good. Listen to what happens here. What I'm noticing is that the great need today is to feed people. In many places, believers are gathering together. They got all of the modern equipment that they need. They got their screens on this corner, and a screen on that corner, and a screen there, and a screen up here, and they flashing the word up on the screen, and they flashing the song, and they flashing the scriptures. But a lot of them being fed. Yeah. Amen. Wow. Hear me. Hear me. Yeah. A lot of them being fed. Nope. We flashing all of our scriptures, and people are jotting them down, and some of them are reading them, but they're not getting reason we take our time and go through series after series after series after series and sometimes listen in the course of this year I realized I have not taken on but 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 almost three topics and, and been ministering off of those topics almost the whole 2016 yes. yeah. and still trying to feed you yes. as the Lord will have me to do yes. why so that you can keep growing yes. spiritually. Yes. Feeding has to be done consistently and Jesus. faithfully. Yes. You know why? Because there are still some babies. How? Why? Yeah. You gotta put something in their mouth. Yeah. Right. When the word of God is ministered consistently and faithfully going to do the job. Yes. Here's what I'm noticing. Here's what I'm noticing. People are gathering together. But many times in our gatherings, we're not really taught the word. A lot of churches are gathering, but they're not really taught the word. A lot of people are gathering in conferences and many other events, but not really being taught the word. Amen, right? Amen. Consequently, the flock becomes anemic. Wow. We're not reproducing spiritually, nor are we reproducing numerically. And then here's what starts happening. The pastors on the boards of such churches will often implement programs and or techniques to bring about growth. We start talking about door-to-door -door evangelism, and there's nothing wrong with that. But don't use that as a technique just to try to do what we fail to do, and that is feeding the ones wow. that we have. Mm -hmm. wow. yes. mm. Another thing we start doing, another thing that we start doing is that we start implementing contests. Mm. Yeah. Baby contests. Wow. 100 women in hats contests. <laughs> 200 brothers in black contests. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Fish fry Saturday contest. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to see who makes the best fish, but we selling fish sandwiches. Church ought to be funded by tithes and offerings. Right. I look at how God has blessed this ministry over these years. Yes. When I first came here, we couldn't enjoy service upstairs because we had ham biscuits and sausage biscuits frying downstairs because we were selling biscuits after church. And sometimes folk would get up out of service while the word was going forth to go down and, 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 and when the benediction was given, they downstairs eat. Why you leave her? And I had to have something on my stomach. Now I'm trying to put something on your stomach now. So y'all remember that? Oh, y'all remember that? Man, them ham biscuits, that aroma from them ham biscuits sometimes made me want to run out of the pool pit. I, I wanted to say, forget y'all, because y'all <laughs> But you know what happened? 
the more we started teaching and ministry yes. on tithes yes. and offerings, yes. Yes. the lady that was downstairs selling was my mother-in-law. And you know what she said to me? She said, listen, I'm going to close this kitchen down because I want to get upstairs and get that word. Yes. And the church started tithing and giving. And realize we didn't have to sell anything yet if we just did what the word yes. grows yes. us up in. Yes. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Growth doesn't mean, growth to me doesn't mean how many folk I can get to shout. That's, That's right. right. Amen. Yes, yes. Growth to me means people who are sitting and absorbing, yes. taking in. And applying and yes. doing something with it. Yes. You can get folk to shout all day long. I've seen some folks shout. They need it delivered. You think they shouting in the spirit? They need it delivered. They need to cast the devil out of them. Say it, amen. I've seen some folks want to shout. We think we set them off. No, it's a spirit in them that that's got right. set off because yeah. he's fighting against that that's word it. that's yeah. going out. Yeah. He sends his word to heal them, and there's a battle going on. And when yeah. they get happy and jump up, we think we just did something. My God, I'll teach this thing a little bit harder. Oh, and sometimes, yeah. sometimes, sometimes, sometimes there's a demon trying to come out. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit wants to come in. Yeah. Yes, hallelujah. You do know there are demons, don't you? Yes, yes. I'll come back to this. I'll come back to it. We come up with contests. We come up with all sorts of tricky activities yes. to try to motivate people to share their faith. And oftentimes I've noticed, and I'm noticing in many churches that it's not working. Not working. Mm, yes. We have been called to do what? Feed yes. the flock of God. Not to feed them with current events. That's good if you throw some current events in there. Yes. I talked about Hiroshima earlier. But look how much time I've spent on the word. Amen. Amen. I'm wrong with bringing in current events, but if you're going to bring them in, at least let the word outweigh the current event. Yes. So he's called. Listen to what he does. Listen to what he does. Pastors are teachers instead of feeding the flock. But that starts happening and our techniques and our programs are not working. Look at what happens. Look at the trend. When our techniques and our programs aren't working, then what we do is that, that instead of feeding the flock, we begin to beat the flock. Mm. Wow. <laughs> we start beating up on sheep. And a little later on, not this Sunday, probably the first Sunday, if the Lord doesn't change this, by the first Sunday of next month, uh, when we come back for communion, the first Sunday, if I don't do it before then, uh, I, I'm going to come back and show you that when you start beating up on sheep, that's just like striking Christ. Wow. And I'll give you scripture for it. It's like striking Christ. Notice this. Notice this. When techniques and programs and all of the things we try to implement to bring about growth doesn't work, then we start beating up on the flock. We start saying, why aren't you evangelizing more? Why aren't you working harder? Why aren't you engaged in this ministry? Why aren't you joining this committee? Why aren't you involved in the other activities? Amen. If we feed them, yeah. they will get involved. Yes. Amen. Because the word will take care of a whole lot of the things that need to bring awareness to the believer or to the sheep so that we'll know what we're supposed to do. Yeah. Yes. Amen. And so it becomes a beating on the sheep mm -hmm. instead of a feeding the sheep. Wow. A lot of times because we don't Spend time in the Word, studying and hearing from God. We're having to take what other people tell us and we come to the pulpit. And because we're the only speaking voice, this is my time now to hit you with what I want to hit you with. Mm -hmm. That should never That's right. be yeah. That's according right. to the Scripture. Yeah. What teachers and pastors and preachers 
that leaders are to do. We are to feed the flock of God. Yes. And let me tell you, when you start feeding people the word of God, the word will find us right where we are. Right. How many of y'all were saved and bought by yes. the blood of Jesus yes. Christ because yes. the word found you where you were? Yes. Yes. Go ahead and bless God this morning. Give him, give him praise and give him glory. That's weak. That's real weak. That's real weak. I said, go ahead and bless God. Yeah.